All right, so a friend called me up, sent me a text and said, listen, I need some advice. I am looking for some hanging baskets to go in a shade area. And I'm like, hey, shade area, what do you mean? I've got a um, porch with some hooks. We just moved into a place and I'm looking for some flowers. And I said, hmm, what about macho ferns? And their answer was something in color. So the problem with hanging baskets that go in the shade is that unless you really have some light, you're gonna have issues with the plant continuing to flower. In uh, We're in the New Orleans market, and we have a problem with impatience. There's a fungus, that uh, airborne fungus, that's attacking them and kills them. So that really is the plant that I would tell somebody to use. So I'm actually gonna pull in here to a Home Depot and take a look really quick to see what they have. See if I can come up with something that works. All right, so you can see that I walked up here to Home Depot and they have just gotten Racks and racks and racks of flowers were just pulled in. Everything from vinca, actually they have some pretty good looking vinca, to begonias, and then uh, they've got some New Guinea impatience, as well as some mixed colored baskets. Portulaca, Penta, I mean they've got Terinia, Ivy, I mean they've got a bunch of stuff. Part of the problem that you run into when you buy from the larger mass merchants is that you tend to um, buy from a company that has been using growth regulators to control the growth of the plant, as well as um, you're not really sure how long these plants have sat on these carts. So some things that you need to make sure and do is use fertilizers, as well as liquid fertilizers, granular fertilizers, and soil. A uh, very wise landscape architect, who I uh, have a great respect for, Jack Cochran, um, here in New Orleans, once told me, a $1 plant with a $10 hole is much better than a $10 plant with a $1 hole. And that is definitely the great advice. So you can buy plants from these uh, mass merchants, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, whatever might be your big box in your area. Um, but I would definitely consider making sure that you buy a higher end garden soil. Um, I wouldn't do any of the miracle Grow products. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of a product called Metro Mix. Um, and yes, I happen to sell it, but I've been using it. I used it as a grower. When I was growing, I used it when I was um, a landscaper. I still do landscaping. And I sell it to uh, universities and they use it in testing. So I'm a huge fan of it. I, the Metro Mix product is superior. So let's go see if we can find some shade loving plants from my friend. All right, so as you can see, they already have some of these mixed baskets, the proven winter plants in them. Um, and you can see these Aqua Saver hanging baskets. I don't know uh, how much I would believe that those liners look like they're a little bit old. But I am on a mission. Blah, 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 blah. That's right, I am on a mission for shade loving plants. So I do see some ivy here. So this could work in our hanging baskets. Nice little pots. Hmm. And, boy, these look dynamite. Clean them up a little bit. All right, we're gonna keep looking. I always do that. I don't know why I take these deep breaths. All right, so we hit a whole little series of some really good looking New Guinea impatience. So these might be the thing for, as well as there's some coleus on the other side and some begonias. Let's see if we can find some caladiums for her. Mm -hmm. So here are all the different soils. I don't know. I was choosing one of these. I definitely wouldn't choose the Miracle Grow product. Let's see if any of these bags are open. Let me see what this is a. What do they call this? Organic raised potting soil. This looks like it is. That's pine bark vines. So there is no soil in that at all.
This has a little bit of soil-based products in it, but man. Hmm. Wait till I see the Metro Mix. All right, so I came back from Home Depot, and here's what I picked out. I picked out some ivy, some Lizamachia, some Dusty Miller, some New Guinea Impatience. I'm gonna do a planting combination. Real simple, obviously you can see, I purchased some larger New Guineas to go with some shorter New Guineas. I'm gonna fill in with some Dusty Miller, some Lizamachia, and have the ivy trailing over the edges. I'm gonna plant these in some 18 inch cone baskets. As you can see that I'm actually using a something to hold them up. This happens to be a trash can. Because these are not the easiest, not the easiest, and let me see if I can get a better shot there, not the easiest to support. Five gallon buckets work pretty well, but I was looking for something that was a little bit larger because it's 18 inches. One of the things I highly recommend if you use a sphagnum moss basket like this, wet them down before you plant them because they are very dusty. Now I was telling you when I was at Home Depot, we were talking about potting soil and um, I was telling you about my Metro Mix product. So this is Metro Mix. This is what we sell to uh, NYU, you know, Florida State, uh, universities all over the US that use it in testing. The reason why is because this soil is always specific. This is Metro 360. We're gonna open it up here in a minute. We're gonna add it into our container. We're gonna add those plants and we're gonna see what it looks like. All right, so I was telling you about the Metro Mix. When I was at Home Depot, there were, you know, bags that said organic, organic um, bedding material, potting soil, amendments, you name it. This is Metro Mix. It's, uh, you know, it's funny, I always use the word soil, but it's really soilless soil. You can see, I mean, when you touch this stuff, I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I hate to say it, it's great. So we use this for, we've used it for everything from potting um, vegetables to, you know, when you, when you go ahead and, and start planting, I mean, there's a company out there called Ball Horticulture, which provides plugs in various sizes and you fill your trays, you know, little four inch cups, fill your trays and push your plugs in and grow them out. And this is the material that we used. Um, what's really great about it, it, it's got enough organics in it to, to soak up some water. It helps support nutrients and it gives the roots a great environment to grow and flourish in. I highly recommend, you know, again, I was telling you about the landscape architect, Jack Cochran, who I've always looked up to, who, you know, I was working on a project at Audubon Park Golf Course and he looked at me one day and he's like, now, you know, what's better? The, $10 plan and a $1 hole or a $1 plan and a $10 hole. And I mean, that was probably 1994 and it's stuck with me ever since then. I know, silly little story. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this soil here and we're gonna drop it down in here. We're gonna fill this up and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start adding our color to it. I'm gonna head, go ahead, I'm not heading, I'm not heading anywhere. I'm gonna start adding our soil. So again, this is the Metro Mix 360. You can find it for sale online at thegardengates.com. Um, there are a couple other vendors that sell it. I know uh, SunGrow is the manufacturer. I think they s might sell it on Amazon, but it's always out. I know Amazon won't let me sell it um, because they sell it, they fulfill it. So as we go ahead and we add the Metro Mix in here, I'm gonna fill it up almost all the way because I'm gonna plant the one gallon New Guinea impatient I have first in the center, and then I'm gonna build out from there. So if you happen to like this video or any of the other videos that I make, please subscribe, hit the like button, drop me a comment, and uh, let me know what I can do. I can add more information, better video, all that good stuff. I'm happy to do it. All right, just a couple more scoops. So this bag is 2.8 cubic feet. So 2.8 cubic feet, this is uh, 
an 18 inch cone basket, I am gonna end up using about half of this bag to fill this up. One of the things you do have to remember when you're planting containers, um, you are gonna lose, have some shrinkage when you go to water. So it's always sometimes nice to overfill and then water in and see how you go from there. All right. I like to make it like a little cake. One of the things I also highly recommend is that you use a fertilizer, a slow release fertilizer with any of your planting. Um, Osmocote's a really good one because people aren't great at application rates. And what I mean by application rates is when you're applying fertilizers, it's, it's not like vitamin C, you know, you can't just take more. You wanna be very specific. Um, one great thing about Osmocote is they talk about a um, guaranteed no burn. It's really tough to burn plants with Osmocote. But recently uh, I have a Osmocote video out there and I've been engaging in conversation with one of the um, subscribers and they asked me a bunch of questions about the Osmocote and they talked about you know adding the, they've seen videos out there where people add the fertilizer to the base of the plant. Look, I highly recommend you look at the square footage of a space, like four square feet, you know, on the label instructions, I can't remember exactly what it says, but it probably says something along a couple of tablespoons per four square feet. So I would just look at a space like this is an eight, 18 inch circle, um, you know, it's about, I would probably add, you know, a couple of tablespoons to this, mix it into the soil, then plant your plants so the fertilizer is in the soil and releases slowly over. We're gonna get to the planting. So I was saying I was inside of my warehouse. So I'm inside of our warehouse here in Metairie, Louisiana. And that's why you might hear a little bit of echo. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna loosen up. You're gonna see, I like to actually crack and rip the roots of the plant. This is pretty healthy, I'm pretty surprised. Um, I should say, I'm pretty surprised. I'm surprised that the mass merchant has a plant that actually has some root structure to it. A lot of times when I go there and I'll pick something up for either myself or a client um, in the New Orleans area, they don't have great root structures. So take your time picking out plants. You can see that I've taken Push the plant down, I've packed it in pretty firmly. I've made sure not to cover the crown or the top of the soil. And I know a lot of you know this, but some people don't. So you don't want to cover the top of the soil. It's like putting water just over the height right over your nose where you can't breathe. Same thing for plants. So I am gonna drop some of these other plants in here, find some things that I like. I'm going to use the ivy as well, put those in, let's see what I come up with. Yeah, the ivy's great, it's really, it's really good. So circles are, you know, because this is a circle, it's pretty easy, you just balance it all the way around, you know, a lot of times with hanging baskets or planters, I always tell people you really can't make mistakes. You know, because all you're doing is planting things that you like. So you can't make that many mistakes in the process of doing them. Other than if you combine, you know, sun, sun and shade plants together. Yes, the um, New Guinean patience, which is, which is what we've used here, can tolerate some sun, but we're going to be using it in a shade environment. I'm gonna, I have three of these I have to do. This all started by a conversation, like I was saying today, when someone started asking me a question about what I thought they should do. And as I began to draw a little sketch, then I was like, well, let me just go pick this stuff up. I've got the planters upstairs, and I'll whip it together, because it's far easier for me to do than to explain it. And of course, I got a text message back that was like, I didn't want you to pick my plants out, but I do like them. That's usually how it works. All right. So I'm gonna grab some other ones here. So I'm not a huge fan of these 
these little packs of plants. Um, this is going to work for what my intentions are. Pack those in, smash them in. I've always liked doing hanging baskets and containers because I like the really fill the plants up and it's pretty much instant gratification most of the time definitely make sure to pack these in I talked about fertilizer I haven't added fertilizer with these planters but I'm going to I'm gonna sprinkle them in I want you to think I'm just talking about it I'm gonna sprinkle them in yeah these new guineas these suckers are packed. They'll pick off. These are really root packed too. So when I was at Home Depot, I was talking about how you have to be careful because you don't know how long the plant's been on the shelf. So this plant's pretty root bound as well as it's dry as can be. So you want to make sure when you get those plants home that you really get them some water. Sometimes I recommend watering the plants before you plant them. Maybe even let them sit for a bit. Yeah, I mean, you look at this one right here. I mean, it's that's why the leaves are yellow. It's not getting enough water. It's root bound. The soil's all spent. And a lot of these growers are producing plants to go to grow as quickly as possible in these environments because you know that's obviously you know how they make the most money is move as many much of their inventory as possible. So corners do get cut. Um, one of the things that, you, well, I always talk about fertilizer, or, you know, I used to own a garden center, and when people would always say, your plants look so great, what happens? Why do they not look that great when they get to my house? Well, in a lot of the garden centers, all the high-end garden centers that I know, all use um, fertilizer injectors in the stores. So fertilizer injectors are used in the growing facility as well as in the retail facility. So basically it's on like an IV drip system of food and then it goes to your house. You forget to water it, you forget to fertilize it and it basically goes into shock. So always make sure that you do, there's me saying so again, damn it. Always make sure that you use a fertilizer and always make sure that you water your plants. We are almost done. I've packed in about as many plants as I can put in this thing. But of course, that's what I like to do. Kristen, who I'm making these for, is standing behind me or right now. She's looking at it. She's probably like, I don't like white. I don't like white. So that's basically it. That's an 18 inch cone basket. This is gonna fill in. It's not gonna come off of there. You can see this is gonna go. It's gonna hang on her porch. We have some big hangers for it. It's gonna be dynamite, we're gonna do three of them. So again, if you have any questions, you wanna know anything about gardening, um, anything about all kinds of things, I love to cook as well. Please subscribe, drop me a comment, hit like, hit dislike if you hated it. This is Chad Harris with GardenGates.com.